Hey guys, Rorius here. Welcome back to Valley. Ah, oh, the menu music is actually so... <sighs> Alright, let's continue. We got up to the Soma facility last time. So we went up like the mountain, we went up Titan Rock, and uh, we found ourselves outside the facility where I think they are, well, as far as we know, they're storing the life seed in there, or they once stored the life seed in the Soma facility. So we like broke in basically we smashed through a roof and fell in to this to the facility and now we're uh heading inside to see if we can find the seed <laughs> okay yeah so we smashed through this that's right we got the uh grappling hook in the last episode so now we can grapple to like devices that look like that uh these little cranes yeah we made our way in uh smashed through the through the roof and uh, now we're just running around inside. I'm curious to see how this game will play inside. No trees or orbs nearby. Take energy from storage cells to restore your reserves. Or to restock, sorry. Oh. Um. Oh, that's not a storage cell. This is a storage cell. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, and it has... I see, it has like little bars. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, I'm assuming the like candy things that we ki we came across in the previous episode are going to be more prevalent here because there's no trees or life to absorb from. I'm assuming there's going to be a low low supply of uh, energy around this area. I shouldn't just idly or you know without thinking double jump. Not a good idea. <laughs> Detention? <laughs> I'm assuming they mean like like criminal detention or you know being put into a cell. Whatever the case. <laughs> I was like running around looking at random stuff. Um, okay. Note from a guard. I'd give anything to be a pathfinder. But there's no way I'd ever be eligible unless I suddenly lost 60 pounds. That'll never happen. Too bad. I bet you could pick up a lot of girls in those things. Well, if that's your intentions, then... What am I looking at? Oh, there's a, there's a thing underneath it. I see. Pick up audio logs. Oh. September 17th, 1942. My name is Andrew Fisher, leading physicist and head of Project Pendulum. Pendulum is the research and development project directed by the Army Corps of Engineers to produce a weapon of mass destruction that can bring an end to the war. I see. The unconditional surrender of our enemies. In response to the spy-ridden efforts of the Manhattan Project, headed by my <laughs> cohort, Robert Oppenheimer, Pendulum I see. has been founded under the utmost secrecy. Funds, pride, and soldiers' lives are all on the line in a race to win the war, thus giving rise to the name Pendulum. I see. Note from a researcher. Within the summer facility, we are surrounded by the Amrita fuel slugs extracted from the valley. As such, we tend to be isolated from the effects of the Pathfinder's quantum death side effects. Oh. I was amazed to one day step out of the facility to see scores of trees dead around me. Right, yeah. So I imagine that that's, that's probably why they don't use these suits anywhere else. It's because there's no way to stop the suit from absorbing human life energy to, to, you know, to save the person inside the suit. So it'd be hugely dangerous to have these around populated areas. Hmm. Whatever the case. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, so like, as you expect from a military group, they hear about this thing that potentially could destroy the world, essentially, and they want to turn it into a weapon. So freaking typical. <laughs> oh dear. I can see, I'm hoping that turns on some lights. Because it's pretty dark in here. And I don't want to miss any of the, uh, <laughs> of the chests. 
Oh god. The Fly Lordship achievement. Okay, apparently that was for pacifying a certain amount of Emerita swarms. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that was very well hidden. <laughs> Note from a worker, most of the contractors who helped construct this place have since been sent back home, having no idea where exactly in the mountains they had been working. As far as they knew, they were simply building an alternative energy research compound. The army was careful to hide the orbs, ruins, and sprites from the contractors, limiting where they could go and what they could see. I don't believe that... <laughs> that they'd be good enough at hiding stuff like that from people. I think people like to think that the governments of the world are like these all-powerful and all-capable entities. But most governments can't hide shit from people. <laughs> they try and fail most of the time. Note from a guard, right before being sent out here, I got to see the Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup. That goal by old P.D. Langell was one to remember. I'd bet anything they're going to win the Cup next year. I'd even bet my children on it. They don't really like me anyhow. Okay. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh, another one of these. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Just take all. Take it all. Only thing with this area is I can imagine you actually getting stuck. I can imagine people getting genuinely stuck in this area. Because if you use all of your uh, energy and you've taken all the energy from nearby sources, you know, then how do you open the door? You're just, you're just trapped. It's so dark in here. Wait, was there a thing I could shoot? There was an energy thing over here, wasn't there? There was. <laughs> I keep like not shooting them. Thinking like, oh, I'll come back for that. Oh, I did not need to take that. Whoopsies. Uh, but then, you know, like I, I, I'm like, oh, I'll shoot that once I've had a look around. Forgetting that half the time they help you look around. <laughs> Shit. Oh, these regenerate. These regenerate energy over time. I see that now. See, like, I took a whole bunch of energy from it and now it's half full again. Yeah, I really thought that it was like a you could trap yourself kind of situation. But no, no, it was all, it was all good. It's the thing is that, like, in most contexts and most places, you have pretty well infinite energy. But, um, because of the orbs that are around. But in this area, I thought there was a way you could, like, run out. Pendulum's location and purpose is unknown to the outside world. Taking a cue from the Manhattan Project, only a small few know of Pendulum's purpose, operating under the guise of an alternative energy project. As it came to light that Manhattan had been plagued with espionage, it was agreed upon to shroud Pendulum within the government itself. All those who knew of Pendulum's true intent are here, though admittedly extreme. We can ensure an ironclad umbrella of secrecy. Information can only come in, and none can go out. As far as anyone outside this valley knows, Pendulum does not exist. This valley right. does not exist. I see. Okay, so there's definitely a secret here, and there's a way to get to it from that vent there. I can't tell if the vent comes from the right or the left. I think it comes from the right though, because I have a feeling. Oh, crane block. Oh, that's what how you go, to, how you proceed. It might be. I don't know. God damn it! There we go. There's no other vent on this side, is there? Or is there? Oh, there is. I see. <laughs> nice. Oh man, that was a big pile of acorns. That was like one entity that just had a million acorns. <laughs> Friggin' sweet. Okay, let's do this. So yeah, using the chain as well, using this thing, uses power, or uses the Amrita energy. It kinda sucks, but I get it. It's like a... Because you need to have... You need to have a way to make the you know, the player to not constantly use it. If this was a Half-Life game, I would be incredibly suspicious of a random vent in the middle of the room like that. Alrighty, let's keep moving. Wait, what's this? Vent access, okay. 
Whee! That feels like a, a barrier that I can't go back now. <laughs> Oh, a whole bunch of broken crane blocks. Huh. Oh, cool. We can see outside. I'm assuming you probably could have seen in through the vents from the outside as well. <laughs> they must have a ton of the, the facility outside already, like, still included in this. We. <laughs> Let's power this up. Get some lights going. Oh! We're in like a lobby now. Welcome to the Pendulum Research and Development site. All personnel must report to the front desk with appropriate security clearance. <sighs> this was the picture of the level, like the chapter. Huh. Note from Andrew Fisher. Due to the power strain as the reactor ramps up production to meet our increased quota, we've experienced frequent power outages. As such, I've ordered Amrita generators as a backup power source to be temporarily installed throughout the facility. Blackouts should cease to occur. I see. Huh. Makes sense for the context of the game. I finally got to see one of those orbs out in the wild while I was on leave for the day. There's something surreal about them. I stared into it for who knows how long. Yeah, that's the thing, is it's like a it's such a strange entity. You wonder like what it actually is and why it's there and what it's doing, you know. It's function in nature. Oh. Yay! <laughs> they love using... They love putting those things in, like, obscure places, but, like, not always. So, like, some of the... Sometimes you go out into obscure places, there's just nothing, it's just barren. And then sometimes you go out there and there's a freaking chest with... That stuff in it, with those things in it. Cafeteria. Why does it blink? Why is it blinking? Is there something in the room blinking? Or is it just weird? It must just be weird lighting. Lighting artifacts. Did I say artifacts? I meant artifacts. <laughs> From a worker. We better finish up this project soon. Those supply drops are only scheduled to arrive for a few more months. Otherwise, due to the isolation policy, we're on our own. The pilots know nothing of this operation other than the or their orders to drop off supplies to this location until the end of this year. I think they were told this is for a mining operation. No wonder Fisher is going mad over our timelines. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's lies after lies after lies. You'd think that all these lies would come back to bite them. Maybe it did. Maybe that's exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm like running along the normal paths because... I think there might be stuff around, like these notes. Note from an administrator. Trying to keep this operation a secret has been an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Between coordinating uh, surreptitious supply drops, securing illegitimate funds, channeling resources and, m and manpower, to creating thousands of ghost accounts and fake offices to bury the operation from any level of government. From any level of government. <laughs> My bad. Barring someone accidentally stumbling across this location in one of the most remote areas on the planet, there's no chance anyone will find us out here. I don't know. What about me? I'm just your average citizen. And I found you. I mean, I say I'm an average citizen. I specifically came looking for you guys. <laughs> hmm. There's lots of notes. I haven't heard from Virginia much recently, but there's lots of notes. Private Riley. I've been ordered to patrol the Soma facility again today. I've circled through the same th rooms 30 times since noon. At least I get to smile as at the cute scientist in the pressure chambers each time. She hasn't smiled back at me yet. I hope she doesn't find me creepy. <laughs> hmm. Note from, note from a Pathfinder. Lots of reading today. It's odd to think about what exactly a life is once you've experimented quantum death. Or sorry, once you've experienced quantum death. What exactly are the ingredients that make up my life? My ingredients aren't really any different from anyone else's. Carbon, calcium, hydrogen, etc. Held together with some energy. So what exactly makes me, me? I guess if anything, I'm just a pattern. One that forms out the chaotic bl blender of matter in the universe. Like a whirlpool out in the water. And when I die, that pattern simply dissipates back into the cosmos. Are we all the same universe simply expressing itself? One of the Pathfinders was a deep thinker, it would seem. <laughs> I love that I'm just like... 
Oh, I keep doing- I keep, like, going to grab those when I really shouldn't. Uh, I should learn to not just grab everything that's in those. Oh god. <laughs> cool. Two Amrita swarms inside the facility, that's crazy. Uh, what the hell was I saying? <laughs> It's interesting that they've got these rechargeable energy sources and they've got those, like, packets of four. Because, like, the packets of four, they don't recharge. But those things do recharge. Why... Why the, the re non-recharging and the recharging together? Weird. When I don't hear from Virginia, it freaks me out. It makes me think that, um, I'm... Like, the, the story thing isn't set properly. Ever since I found that setting about, like, re redoing story stuff, I've been, like, nervous about missing stuff. Note from a psychologist. Several guards on Nightwatch have reported large creature sightings. Some of them are a little shaken up by it. It might just be that being stuck out here in the middle of nowhere for so long is finally getting to them. Either way, we'll need full annual psychological assessments for all personnel in the near future. Right. Hmm, I see. Memo. Please report any suspicious activity to an officer immediately. Any hesitation could place the entire operation in jeopardy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I keep reacting like that. It's because I'm like, I'm reading it and it's it's interesting, but it's not that interesting. So I just phase out half the time. <laughs> Note from a worker. Ralph, I saw you take a sip of my coffee this morning and it wasn't the first time either. You know how scarce coffee is getting around here. Please stop sipping my coffee, Frederick. Okay, maybe Ralph's just into you. <laughs> Note from a worker. I'm getting real sick of your attitude, Ralph. I saw you sneak into my office and steal pencils again. I'm running low and really need them for my work. The next supply drop isn't until the spring. Stop stealing my pencils, please and thank you. Note from a researcher. That no good Simmons is sucking up to Fisher again. He's always first to volunteer for assignments, which is no surprise as Fisher can hardly enter a room without him following. He's not even all that smart, just great at agreeing with everything Fisher has to say. Is that how you get ahead these days? <laughs> just a yes man. I was about to sing Elvis. And I realized that would be really cringy. <laughs> you ain't nothing but a yes, man. Uh, all personnel are expected to work longer hours during the ramp up in production. If you believe you are unable to perform your duties as expected, please report to a supervisor immediately. Note from a researcher. A large-scale extinction event occurred in North America near the end of the, uh, Pleistocene? <laughs> Pleistocene? I don't know, period. Interestingly, the epicenter of the extinction seems to stem from this valley's location. Could Area 634 have anything to do with it? Oh. Well, let's head upstairs. So I believe that's where it's trying to direct me. I turned on the power here, didn't I? Yeah, this is, this is with the lights on. I'm just trying to imagine the scientists running around here in the frickin' dark. <laughs> Please refrain from washing office supplies unnecessarily. Sorry, wasting. Stock is running low. Please exhaust all office supplies to their full extent. Oh. Freaky. Boilermaker. They told us we were building some sort of alternative energy facility here, but little, e but little else. Tradesmen are only allowed in certain areas at certain times for certain jobs. They're keeping us completely in the dark, having us all focus on a single task at a time rather than giving us any hints into the bigger picture. What are they hiding from us? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, to, hard to keep secrets because people talk. Contractor. Now that the isolation policy is in effect, I found out that this weapon project of some- This is a weapon project of some sort. I still don't know much, but I hope to find out more. I just wish I could talk to my family back home, let them know I'm doing okay. Oh? What's with all the movement? Am I gonna see someone or something in here? Okay, so if, if it wasn't upstairs that I was going, where the hell am I going? <laughs> oh, here we are. <laughs> I found it. I can't believe it. I'm almost at a loss for words. This is the discovery of a lifetime. No, no, of the 20th century. Have I found Schrodinger's cat? This is beyond my wildest imagination. As a result of the reaction between the Amrita energy and the Pathfinder's own life force, they experience what I have dubbed quantum death. Oh, when a right, I see. While wearing the suit, their consciousness branches into a new reality, unharmed. They achieve quantum immortality. 
Wait. Wait, what? They're implying now that it uses realities? It uses alternative realities to keep the person alive? Well, shit, that... Because that means that... They're not actually... They're not actually surviving. They're not actually living through the through the death. Their consciousness is jumping to an alternative reality where they didn't die. Or where they didn't put themselves in a situation that got them killed. What? Unless I misunderstood what he said. That throws... That's... You're getting into, um, Bioshock Infinite territory here. Oh. Well, there must be a swarm through the, through the door there. Let's open this up and have a look, but I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, take that. Mosquito swarm. Apparently Amrita swarms are just mosquitoes that feed off of Amrita. Uh, let's just have a quick look in here and see if... If there's not... Like, see what's in here. Because I don't know which way is the right way to go yet. Oh. A uh, note from a researcher. The leaf suit may prove to be the pinnacle feat of Pendulum. The ability to manipulate life and death using the God Hand. The agility and the ability to circumvent death. Right. All thanks to the Amrita energy converted from this valley's orbs. We can create the ultimate soldier. The Mark II's success will her herald a new wave of iterations. Hmm. I'm curious. I'm curious now. Note from Private Matthews. The way Edwin makes a show with Virginia all the time really makes my teeth grind. Everyone knows that romantic involvement between personnel is prohibited, yet no one does anything about it. Why does he get to run around with a girl while the rest of us sit around and play poker for the 9,000th time? Oh. Virginia and who? Edwin. Let's have a run around and have a look around this little lobby area, because I didn't- I went straight to the- oh, the door. And I didn't look over here yet. What about over here? Another box. Good. Oh, energy cell. Wonderful. Charlotte Smith. I've run through the annual psychological assessment for all personnel stationed in Area 634. Many are reaching a breaking point in their isolation from friends and family back home, and the work hours demanded from them is taking its toll on morale. Despite this, most are quite mentally stable. The project lead, Andrew Fisher, Andrew Fisher, does not concern me. Oh, sorry, does concern me. Oh. Interesting. Okay, let's go back through the toilets. This seemed like it was the way I'm supposed to go. Not that way. <laughs> Up here. I keep wanting to do the Borderlands thing of, like, pressing control to, like, slam down onto the floor. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that's a feature we get soon. I just had to make sure for a second there that... It's no shadow. Yeah, so if if you deployed these in a place or deployed something similar in a place, that would that would change war as you know it, you know. You send oh. 
housed within a reactor found deep underground beneath the Soma facility. By harvesting the high energy yield orbs found within the valley, we pass their energy through the life seed, which acts as a sort of amplifier, magnifying the energy to unprecedented levels. The explosives we create here will dwarf anything the Manhattan Project could ever possibly fathom. <laughs> right. Um. No, just I, I'm. I find it funny they're still focusing on the life seed because the the leaf suit is like way more impressive. I wonder how it would work if you, if there are multiple people with leaf suits that die at the same time in the same proximity. Because what what I suddenly imagined is that you just deploy like a thousand people into a city, into a into a, an enemy stronghold. You know, you you just deploy a huge squad of people to your enemies and have them all kill themselves, immediately sucking all the life force of the immediate surroundings out of out of the area. If there are humans, if there are enemy humans there, they will forfeit their lives to re replenish. The soldiers who killed themselves. So you could you could change like fundamentally change war with with these leaf suits. I don't think they've really thought that through very well, have they? Focusing ha heaps on this Amrita and the life seed. The toxicology report came in from the autopsy conducted on the latest Pathfinder fatality. As suspected, the excess of DXIX led to cardiac arrest. The sooner we circumvent the need for DXIX, the better. Yeah. So they found Amrita and they they've infuse the suits with Amrita instead of the people. Uh, and that drastically altered uh, that, that setup. Research Miller. The other scientists were all taking talking about atoms. I told them not to trust them since they make up everything. They asked me to leave. <laughs> I see. Nothing else around here. I don't see anything. So let's keep moving. Another box here. Good, good. Yay! Another slot. Yeah straight away charge these. I'm just shooting them now as soon as I see them. Because uh, they help me find stuff. Oh. Swarm. Where? There they are. <laughs> oh. I thought there might be another one. Any more? Any more where that came from? I don't want to be snuck up on. Miller. I've been trying to think of new puns all day about the stored energy of an object. I think a lot of them have potential. Oh, ha ha, Miller. Terrible. Why is it still playing combat music? I got rid of the Emery to Swarms. I'm now in exploration mode, but I'm on edge because of the music. <laughs> Note from a researcher, depending on the degree of magnitude, certain organisms provide very little Amrita energy when targeted by the leaf suit's god hand. Smaller organisms such as insects, grass, flowers, and other less, less substantial entities provide close to zero energy, thereby affording no value to Pathfinder seeking energy. Right. It's a, it's a loose, it's a loose concept, but sure. <laughs> we'll bite for the, for the sake of, um, the gameplay, I guess. If you could take life forces from every blade of grass. Well, that's the thing, though, is that most grass is sort of one entity. When you see a lawn made of grass, there's... I mean, there's not one, but it's... It's only a handful of entities that make up the entire grass thing, as far as I know. As far as I'm aware. It's not like every blade of grass is another entity. Uh, most grass comes in sort of clusters. So what we think of as being lots and lots and lots of little things is actually sort of larger, but still not very big, uh, you know, clusters of grass, plants. But then, yeah, you start to question, if, you, if you're talking about, um, right, we already looked at that. If you're talking about, like, life energy, it's it becomes a difficult thing to define. It becomes difficult to really explain it properly, because... It starts to call into question, like, what is good enough to have this energy as its life source. If small plants and things don't have enough Amrita, or they don't have enough energy in them to be considered useful, maybe it's a quantity thing. Maybe it's just a quantity thing. There's a, maybe there's a minimum amount of Amrita that they can pull from something 
So if something has less than that amount of amrita, then it can't even pull it because it's like a magnet trying to pull fi small fibers from a distance. You know, it's it's like that doesn't really work either. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I thought the bombs being created were impressive enough. But it's that new weapon prototype that will undoubtedly steal all the attention. It's being called Thanatos. <laughs> Thanatos. Thanatos. Thanatos! <laughs> it's Thanatos! <sighs> ah! I'm sorry. It was too close to Thanos, and Thanos is a meme, so. Yeah. Let's get those lights going. If this place is lit the same way it was lit back when they were originally researching. I would have hated to work in this place. So, it's so dark. Andrew Fisher. It was soon discovered that if the Pathfinder has a vision of their own death, it is in fact them actually dying. Instead of remaining dead, they branch into a new wave of reality, whereupon they continue to live, I'll bet, at the cost of an equivalent amount of life within the branch, within that branch. To put it plainly, if a Pathfinder wearing a leaf suit dies through some accident, their death is traded with the life of nearby living thing, of a nearby living thing. They achieve quantum immortality. Yep, that sounds exactly like the, the dialogue that we saw before. Effectively, those wearing leaf suits gain the ability to deny the actuality of wave function collapse. In other words, the ability to branch through various objective realities as part of the many world theory of quantum mechanics. With this ability, Pathfinders have visions of themselves dying each time. Sorry, <laughs> Pathfinders have visions of themselves dying. Each time this occurs, something nearby dies, such as an animal or nearby vegetation. Tracing the life seed's location was a simple matter. After years of tracking the epicenter of the police to scene, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sure editing Rory will correct me. Extinction event, I was led to this valley. I couldn't believe my eyes. Upon immediate examination of one of the orbs, I discovered their vast energy potential. With the help of the Pathfinders, I was able to locate the life seed within the valley. Oppenheimer won't believe his ears upon hearing the marvels I've accomplished. When I met Einstein at Princeton, <laughs> this guy's a name dropper. When I met Einstein at Princeton, I couldn't help but see a hint of Oppenheimer reflected in him. I was astonished by his clairvoyance into the makeup of our universe, viewing the experience of all things natural and spiritual in perfect unison, with the self acting as little more than an optical illusion in the perpetual flow of the universe. When Oppenheimer and I studied Induology under Arthur Ryder, I could see the same, or that same compassion and empathy for all living creatures brewing within him. Where is this going? Like, narratively. I wonder what they're trying to, to say or trying to achieve with this line of thinking. I think this is the way I'm supposed to go, so I'm going to go the other way. Oh? Weird. Quantum death and immortality using leaf technology is a fascinating field of study. Using this tech, a person could live out a full life without fear of an accident cutting it short. I'll bet the use of immortality is a misnomer, as the user simply shifts to a new timeline wherein they are still alive. This can only hold true until all practical timelines are exhausted. For example, an elderly man dying of natural causes is unlikely to shift into a timeline where they do not die, as that parallel world is very li unlikely to exist. Right. But I mean, that's just it though, is that there is infinite timelines, so... what? Well, yeah, what's happening is they're, they're not... They're not not dying. They are in fact dying, but they their consciousness shifts to an alternative reality where they haven't died. But like, it's similar enough to this one that it doesn't make any significant difference. Hmm. I hate that annoying pun guy. I went into storage looking for an inert gas to fill the glove box. He walked by with the last canister in hand and told me it was Argon. I hate him. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Argon. <laughs> is that supposed to be a pun on all gone? It's all gone. It's our gone. Terrible. Oh, I see. Yeah, actually, absorbing the energy from these little boxes, these little things, is reminding me of Infamous, Second Son. Or Infamous just generally, I guess. I missed that game. I liked Infamous a lot. Yeah, Infamous is one of those games, especially Second Son. Well, I liked- I really liked Infamous 1. Infamous 2, gameplay-wise, was cool. I didn't like it as much, though, as I liked Infamous 1. Oh.
but Infamous Second Son was really cool. It wasn't as good as the previous ones, in my opinion, but there was something about it I really freaking loved. I miss it. No, before before we... I mean, we'll land up here. Before we go any further... We'll top down here. I knew it. I freaking knew it. <laughs> it's just a medallion. Okay. No, I don't... I don't like absorbing energy from the living things around here. Ooh. Hmm. The natural life here seems to be slowly dwindling. Edwin thinks I'm crazy, but I see it becoming... Quieter. Are we gradually killing this place? Yep. That self-righteous anthropologist is stirring up trouble again. <laughs> Her moral objections to this project are the last thing I need on my mind. Uh oh. For the isolation policy, I'd have her removed from the premises and sent back home. <sighs> Were they harming the valley? Yes. I mean, 100%. I'm harming the valley by being here. <laughs> but then you call into question, like, what do you define as harming the valley, I guess? Uh, in the case of dying and sucking the energy out, yes. 100%. Ooh. I used a lot of acorns just then. But, uh, I'm sure it's worth it. It'll be for another full one, yeah. I thought so. There we go. Boom. Another whole slot. I guess if you're thinking of, are we killing the valley in terms of our presence, that's another thing. That's the thing, just being here with all these facilities. Oh. Being here with all these, um, like, military bases and, and probably the the waste we produce and that the fact that we're taking the natural resources to do these things you know different forms god damn it I have the source here so I was like it's all good <laughs> I can just take from it I don't need to worry Right, so yeah, the, the floor opened up. Now we're back to a previous area. And, uh... We're gonna go down here. Oh, God. Let's take it slow. Because there might be stuff down here, this pit. On the way down. No? Oh, level transition. <laughs> okay. The Madman's Hubris achievement. I see. Well, before any dialogue and story happens, uh, we'll leave this here. <laughs> so, we're actually, what is this level called? Soma Reactor. Ah, yes, I heard them talking about the reactor. So, next time, we're going to head to the reactor or head further into the facility and find the, the Amrita Reactor and see what it holds. But whatever the case, I guess we'll find out more next time. <laughs> but in the meantime, if you like what you saw, hit like. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and as always, 